I thought I would address kind of the elephant in fall, which is this guy, the butternut squash, the thing we love and the thing we're afraid of all at the same time. So it's kind of like Halloween. So I wanted to just do a real quick talk about how we can break down a butternut squash and I'll show you a little bit. So if your butternut squash is newer rather than older, you're gonna be able to cut through it pretty easily. If you, like I do sometimes, maybe save butternut squashes for a while, <laughs> you're gonna need your biggest knife and you can also just microwave it just a little bit if you have a microwave. If you don't, you could put it in the oven for maybe 10 minutes and that will soften the, that hard outside up a little bit. But what you're gonna do, and I'm gonna need some of this for another class I'm doing tomorrow, because it is just like butternut squash season. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut off the bottom of this and the top of this. And see, this is pretty new, easy peasy. And then we're going to cut off the bottom. And I try to do as little as I can with that. Typically, and what I've done is I've already cut the neck part out of this one. So we'll look at the neck of this. So about where this ball is, in general, not always, will be where most of the seeds live and the stuff that you want to scrape out. So one of the things that's super awesome about butternut squash is like this top part you can even slice and use as veggie burgers by itself. So I'm going to cut it about where I think that neck is going to end. And there's always some guesswork. So this one actually has some soft all the way through. So let's just take a look at this. Yeah. So this isn't the best example usually, and I'll show you this from, um, overhead too. Okay. Typically the bot the this is going to be solid more like that without that at all. Even with this one what I and I'll, I maybe I'll show you what I would do with this too. So let me I'm going to cut down the middle of this neck which usually I never do. So see that's where it's like trying to get seeds. So you could still scrape this out just like you would a pumpkin or anything else. You could peel it before now or later. And actually this one that I'm using for this um, gumbo actually had a better neck than this one does. I only lost like just a little bit. This one you're going to lose a lot, like a lot. Like let me dig in here and show you, you know, it's almost at least a third. See all that? That is not nice. Let's go ahead and peel this guy. And this one was a little bit hard. And this, like I said, so this one has a pretty thick skin, but you're just still going to peel it. And if you have it really big and tall, you can peel down to the neck as long as you have this flat surface. Okay, so that's really important to remember because what freaks people out about squash, winter squash, is that, you know, nobody wants to lose an arm to make some gumbo. And I'm with you on that one. I got to say, we're going to go ahead and we're going to peel it. And like I said, this one's a little harder. I'm just going to peel about half of it for right now. Because the flour is going, the roux is getting together faster than I had thought it was going to. So then we cut it in half, this base part, right? And typically, back in the old days, like last year, that's where all the seeds ended up being, right? So then when you have it like this, what I usually do is just take like a tablespoon and Sometimes you have to get in there and scrape it out. So let me show you from overhead. Okay. So I'm really kind of taking just like just a barest layer of that off to get all the butternut squash guts out. 
and sometimes you don't have to go as far. This one feels like it's maybe a little bit older. Maybe it's from a couple of weeks ago, but in the winter, and it's okay if you have a few little pieces of the guts too. It's not going to hurt you. It's just, it's not as pretty. That's all. So that was my butternut squash distraction <laughs> for you guys while we made roux. Um, I know almost every time I do um, something in, in a vegan or plant-based group, that's one of the things people want to know.